You ready? Now, now is the time to get off your phone. You had your phone time. Okay. Uh, factorial notation. This is on page nine. Six exclamation mark is not saying six. It actually means something in math, right? So it reads six factorial. And what it means is that starting with six, you go six times five times four times three, right? You just multiply everything down to one. So it usually becomes a big number really fast, really quickly. And so the factorial in the calculator is found this way, but I, I found out a shorter way. Actually, a student taught me a quicker way of getting that. So I'm gonna show I'm gonna tell you to press alpha. So so or alpha and then trace. If you press those two buttons. So alpha is green on mine, and then you press trace. No, wait, oh yeah, yeah, that's another problem, I guess. You gotta go, let me start from scratch. If you press alpha trace, instead of Y bars, you gotta go over to function, sideways. You see option number nine right there, is that exclamation mark? So you either scroll down to it, or you press nine it's up to you and that's how you bring down the factorial like that so let's try six factorial six alpha trace what it always goes to y bars that's not a shortcut i don't think this is shorter than anyway six factorial you hit enter supposed to be 720. we just did that with pre-cal i don't know if you remember six times five times four 720. so um, this is 720 right here. Let's try the other one, math. So the other way of getting to the factorial is go math. Then you got to go probability up here. You see where my pencil is? You got to go over to probability. And then it's the fourth option, right? That's how you call your... I often just copy paste, guys. I just go up to the last factorial I've used. Like I'll just bring that down and then just change the number in front of it. That's what I do quite often. I find it quite sad that factorial isn't just on your keyboard. Like that's a very important uh, symbol in math, but whatever. Okay, so in general, in general, n factorial means the product of all natural numbers, right? Natural numbers are, what are they again? Whole numbers, whole positive numbers not including zero okay that's what natural numbers are uh, one to n such that watch this this is going to be important n factorial is the same thing as n itself times one less than n times two less than n times three less than n and so forth until you get to the three two one at the end it's all multiplication for various reasons, zero factorial is always one, okay? Maybe just memorize that. Zero factorial is one. I won't prove it to you, okay? You cannot take the factorial of a negative number or decimal numbers, okay? This won't work. The answer to such questions is undefined okay you cannot take the factorial of a negative page nine okay so six factorial i want you to evaluate it as well that's just six times five times four times three times two times one which we just did upstairs so we're just going to say 720. we don't have units for that right now If you have negative five in brackets factorial, that's undefined. I want to see what the calculator does though. Wait, right, so you gotta make sure it's in brackets. So you gotta go like this, negative five in brackets and then call the factorial. So I'm gonna go alpha trace, It can't do it if the bracket is there. 
Okay. Because if a bracket is, it's going to take, try to take the factorial of the negative 5. If the bracket isn't there, this is what it does. It's really negative 1 times 8 factorial. That's what, that's what this is saying. That the negative 1 is outside, so it takes the 8 factorial and then it multiplies it by a negative 1. Let's try 8 factorial. Try it. Uh, so I'm going to go 8 and I'm going to go alpha trace. It used to stay here, guys, for me. It used to stay right here. So if you figure that out, uh, I don't know if you need to save that somewhere. I'm going to press 9. So it's, it's a negative 1 times 40. 1320 which is really just negative 40,320 there we go okay. zero factorial is just one you can try it use your calculator it will be one you can't no uh, because if you ever do uh, the province has asked before, like, what is this? And you you have to know that it's undefined. So either you try to type it in and you're like, oh, yeah, I remember now, or just remember it. Yeah. Um, watch this. I want to actually show you how I simplify this. If it ever says evaluate, it means this. You ready? 8 factorial is what? 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Right? That's what that means. And 6 factorial? 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Do you know that, I, I'm pretty sure you'll agree with me, but you can just cancel all of these numbers out with all of these here and you're really just left with 8 times 7. What's 8 times 7? 56. Okay. Next, I'll show you a different way. Watch this. 7 factorial is what? 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times you ready for this? I'm not going to go all the way down to 1. I'm just going to say 3 factorial. You're like, why not? Why are you doing that, Mr. Erickson? Why don't you go 3, 2, 1? This is still saying times 3 times 2 times 1. But watch this. What's, at the, what's in the denominator? It's your 3 factorial all over again, correct? Yeah. Smile and wave. All right, so 3 factorial cancel out. It just saves you from having to write out 3, 2, 1, 3, 2, 1 twice. And then you just go and figure this out, right? So 5 times 4 is 20, times 6 is 120, times 7 is, wait a minute, I have 840 here. 120, yeah, it's 840, yeah, it is, it is 840. So here you just go 7 times 6 times 5 times 4. And that's 840 right there. And you're like, why are you doing that, Mr. Erickson? I would just type in 7 factorial divided by 3 factorial, and I'll get 840. What's the big deal? This is where the big deal arises. Let's skip this one. Let's, let's try this one. I dare you to try. I hope it doesn't work. That's my intent. Try to type in 100 factorial divided by 97 factorial, because the province has done this. Okay, and you have to come up with an answer. We're going to go 100, alpha trace. Eh, this is annoying. It used to stay there for me. I don't know what happened. Maybe 100 factorial divided by 97 factorial. Does that work? Oh, it doesn't work. Yes. Uh, you're like, why, why are you happy that it doesn't work? Because this is what you're supposed to do. The same reasoning that we just did here. Okay, watch this. I always break down the bigger factorial first. 
100 factorial is bigger than 97. So I will go 100 times what comes next. 99 times 98 times 97. Do you want to write out 97 all the way? I dare you to. It's not going to be wrong, but it's going to take you a long time. So watch this. I stop at 97 because I have a 97 factorial at the bottom. Not 97, it's 97 factorial, okay? So that's where you cancel those out. And now we know the answer. Oops. Do this, so we gotta go, this is uh, 9,900, right? These two, times 98. So that's 970,200. This is, this is what I call evaluate, okay? We evaluate it. We don't just plug it into our calculator. So we show how we got it. Okay, that's evaluate. Um, can I just, I'll just do this. Evaluate, right? That word means to show, right? to show your work. And 99% and, uh, of the time when the province says evaluate, you will not be able to just plug it in and, and, and find the answer. Like you'll have to do something like this. You'll have to break it down, okay? Four times three factorial, watch out. It doesn't say four factorial times three factorial. It just says four times three times two times one. That's what it says. It ends up being 4 factorial. Do you see it? What's 4 times 3 times 2 times 1? This is actually 4 factorial here. Uh, so let's do the math here. 2 times 3 is 6 times 4 is 24. a couple more I'll do one and then you'll do the next one okay so let's go to page 10 so this is stuff if you just practice you're gonna get pretty good at it so let me sit imagine somebody's or I give you this one say evaluate or simplify okay which one would you start breaking down out of, there's three different factorials here. I would break down this one first. Break down largest factorial, right? So I'll go 17 times 16 times 15 times 14, and I'll stop there. Why? because I have a 14 factorial in the denominator here, but don't forget about the three factorial. I'm gonna break that one down. Three times two times one times, remember it's all multiplying, there's the 14 factorial there. Just get rid of the 14s here. I would like to clean this up. 17 times 16 times 15 over 3 times 2 times 1. And here I want to show you some simplification, uh, how to simplify. It's a lot faster. Well, it's, it's good to know how to do this before you graduate, in my opinion. You grab any two numbers, one on the top, one on the <coughs> bottom, that have common factors. So, for example... I see that three goes into three and three goes into 15, correct? So I go like this, three goes into three one time, three goes into 15, five times. So you've simplified it like that. The next, I look at two and 16, correct? They're both even. Two goes into, into uh, two one time, two goes into eight, sorry. 2 goes into 16 8 times. So now you've simplified it a little bit. So it's 17 times 8 times 5. You don't have to do that. 1 times 1 times 1 is just 1. 
Right. So you just go 17, 17 times 40, really, and that's 680. That's my final answer. So I, this big number here, or the bunch of factorials there, got simplified to just 680. That's, I want you to try this one here. Take a few, uh, not longer than two minutes, okay? Try, try simplifying this one on your own. See what you get there. And then we'll do expressions. Supposed to get 220. I'm going to say that if you don't simplify like this, I'm not going to take marks off. I just want you to know that it can be done, right? Um, but really, if you break it down like this and you get rid of the factorials and then come up with a final answer, I'm okay. I'm happy. Okay? Keep going. You're with me still, right? I know it's a lot to take in. Uh, but I just want to make sure we cover enough and then we can review down the road. Simplifying expression. So that's a, we're now going to, what is an expression? They contain, like that's what I, contains variables, okay? Usually, oops, sorry, you can't see that. There we go. Expressions. So we're going to do the same type of thing, but now we're going to have variables in the mix. All right, and we're going to slowly warm up to that. When you have factorials involving variables, you want to try and cancel out certain expressions to help you with this. I suggest to expand the greater expression first. Can you highlight that? Expand the greater expression first. So between n plus 5 factorial, right, you would have to agree with me that this is greater than that, right? Because n plus 5 is greater than n plus 1. I think it's pretty obvious there. Or this one is maybe less obvious, but between these two, right, this one is greater than this one because you're subtracting less here than over here. I hope you understand that. Um, and some of you might say, Mr. Erson, I thought negatives were not allowed. We're not saying that the bracket in here is negative, right? We're not saying that. Uh, we're just going to figure out what that number is after subtracting 4 from whatever n ends up being, okay? Tomorrow we'll solve for n. Today we'll just simplify. There are certain values for which the expression is invalid, and these restrictions need to be stated. I will use a different color here for this one. I'll, I'll basically circle in this whole thing. Okay. These are your restrictions. Always state. Always state. And remember, n can be any integer. It could be coming from the left. It could be negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, going on to infinity, right? So that's integers, all numbers, including 0, both positive and negative. Okay, so n could be any of those. n cannot be a decimal. Okay, so if you get a decimal for n, you got to go back. You got to check. 
So maybe I'll say that no decimals. So simplify the following. If you were to have m plus 5, just like that, no factorial, multiplied by m plus 4 factorial, what would that be really? What is that really saying? How could you simplify this into one expression? Let me, let me give you an example. Example, if I told you 10 times 9 factorial, what is, isn't this really 10 factorial, if you think about it? Hold on, hold on. Watch here, 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Don't you see that it's really just 10 factorial? I just want you to see that. If you ever see, like, an expression with factorial and one number bigger than it in front of it, it is really, how would we write this? n plus 5 factorial. Again, you got to just stay, stay in the game, guys. I'm going to do examples, and then at some point, you're going to have an aha moment, right? Okay, let's actually get to the simplifying part, this one right here. So let's say uh, you have this and you're like, I don't know what to do here. Which one should you expand? Which one is greater? Is it n or is it n minus 2? It's n. n is the bigger one. So this is the greater one. So we're going to expand that one. So let's go ahead and expand. So and it's now weird because it's variables, right? So it's n. What would be the next one? One less than that. n minus 1 times n minus 2. We're getting smaller. Remember, that's what factorial is. You get smaller by 1 every time. I'm going to stop there and just keep the factorial right there. I know it keeps going technically. But what's happening in the denominator? Sorry, my pencil is acting up. There's that n minus 2 factorial, right? That number, which I don't know what it is yet, but I can just go like this. Voila, it's gone. So I'm left with n times n minus 1. You need to distribute that, okay? So n times n is n squared. n times negative 1 is negative n. There we go. You're done. Simplified. Fully simplified. However, we didn't state the restrictions. I actually will do this first next time. The restriction at the top, and there's a restriction at the bottom, but you end up only picking one. One will do the trick here. At the top, n has to be greater than or equal to zero for the factorial to work. And you're like, what? What's that? What are you saying there? Well, n has to be 0 or 1 or 2. Like, it has to be greater than 0, right? Because we can't do negatives. Uh, we can't do negative factorials. There's just no way, okay? At the bottom, n would have to be greater than or equal to what? What would make this 0 right here, guys? If I had a 2 in here, right? 2 minus 2 would give you a 0. So I'm going to say that at the bottom, n would have to be greater than or equal to 2. Okay? And watch this. This is the overall restriction. I just have to take the uh, select the largest 
1. Because guess what, guys? If I say that n is bigger than or equal to 2, that has to be met. Do I need to worry about getting as low as 0? I don't need to even worry about it, right? This takes care of everything. This one here takes care of everything. n is going to be greater than or equal to 2, bottom line, right? So you select that one. This is the overall restriction. So this thing will only work, right, if this condition is met. If n is uh, less than 2, right, if n is less than 2, what's going to happen then? Well, let's plug it in. If it's, let's say, 1, 1 factorial over 1 minus 2 factorial, you've got 1 factorial over 2 minus 1 is negative 1 factorial undefined okay. so I just plugged in I just pretended I let n be equal to 1 right? and you end up with a negative 1 there can't have that that's why you need your restriction right? this thing only works if n is exactly equal to 2 or bigger I want you to try on page 11, I want you to try one just like this. I want you to simplify it, and I also want you to state me. You can do both restrictions and then just select the largest one. That's up to you. Some students, after a while, just give me the largest right off the top. They don't bother giving me both. I just need you to make sure you circle the one that's like the restriction for all of it. Okay? Are you ready to do one on your own? Does it matter if you make a mistake right now? Zero. Yeah, tomorrow. Not today. We're going to leave that for tomorrow. L Let me do one more with you. Right? Because this is the first, your first go at it. So go to page 11, please. Let's do the restrictions first. And you'll find out pretty quick what works. At the top, n has to be greater than or equal to something. At the bottom, n has to be greater than or equal to something. At the bottom, n has to be greater than or equal to 1. If it's exactly equal to 1, right, it's going to be 0 here. That's all. I can do factorial of 0. That's just 1. And then you can use 2 or 3 or 4 and so forth. What about the top? n has to be greater than or equal to? It's, it's kind of counterintuitive. It's going to be negative 2. Why is that, Mr. Erickson? Why are you going negative? Well, let's consider the case where n is equal to negative 2. Negative 2 plus 2 is what? 0. Can you do a factorial of 0? You can. Factorial of 0 is just 1. But then you have to make sure that's bigger than negative 2. It cannot get smaller than negative 2. Because if you went negative 3, negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. Then you're in trouble. So I can guarantee you that your, your restriction will always have to be n is greater than or equal to something. And can I just give you a rule? If it's plus 2, you just change it to negative 2 here. If it's negative 1, it'll just go positive 1. I don't know. That's the pattern. That's the quickest way of just figuring it out, right? And so out of these two, which one is the greater one? Which one is the one that where n has to be the greatest? And it is this one. So all you have to say is, if this condition is met, if n is 1 or bigger, I'm good. I don't even need to worry about this. I'm not going to go as low as negative 2 anyways. So that's your restriction right there. Fun stuff, eh? You'll be all right after a while. Just hang in there, okay? Um, 
which one of these two is the greater expression? n plus 2 or n minus 1? Which one is bigger? It would be this one, right? Because you add 2 to n. So this is the greater expression. So how will you write that out? Watch the brackets. So you take n plus 2. You take that itself, the expression itself. So imagine this is a number, 7, right? Boom, you put 7 down. What's one less than this? n plus 2 minus 1. And then you have n plus 2 minus 2. And then you have n plus 2 minus 3. And I'm going to stop there because I know something that you'll see in just a bit. I'm going to leave the bottom as n minus 1 factorial. Do you see an n minus 1 up here? Do you see that it's going to happen right here? Um, and sorry. Am I going a little bit too fast here? What's happening here is I'm taking n plus 2 again, and I'm taking 1 away because that's what factorial is. You take 1 less than the previous one. Then you go n plus 2 minus 2. n plus 2 minus 3, right? So every time the number is getting a little smaller at the top. Okay? So here we have it. I will do it underneath. Hold on. Let's do one more line. n plus 2. What's this here? n plus 2 minus 1 is n plus 1. And down the road, you'll skip this step that I just showed you here. This is, what's n plus 2 minus 2? That's just n. Okay. And then you have n plus 2 minus 3. That's actually n minus 1. And I factorial it there. Okay. And you go over n minus 1 factorial, like that. You can cancel this out. Like that. And you're left with n plus 2 times n plus 1 times n. Uh, is that fully simplified? We gotta distribute that out. So it's a little ugly. I'm gonna I'm just gonna do these two first. Okay. I'm gonna remember foiling. I don't know if you remember that from intro. I'm gonna go like this. N times n is n squared. N times one is just n. Two times n is 2n, 2 times 1 is 2. Put that in a square bracket because that's what I foiled here. And then I'm going to multiply that by n once I'm done. So that's n squared. What's n plus 2n? That's 3n plus 2. And all of that gets multiplied by the n that was just lurking out here. Right? It doesn't go anywhere. And I will distribute it like this. Doesn't really matter, right? If you have it in the front or in the back. n times n squared, n cubed, plus 3n times n, 3n squared, n times 2 is just 2n. And there you have it. This is fully simplified. Probably one of the tougher ones. Yeah. I will tell you this. I skip this part right here, the very first line. I just automatically go like this. I go, I go n plus 2, n plus 1, because you can see that it's getting smaller, right? 
I don't bother actually writing it out like this down the line. I just wanted you to see it. So then it, it would just be this, cancel out this, foil it, multiply by whatever's outside. This is your final simplified expression. Um, just practice. That's all you need to do, guys, practice. And uh, sometimes, you know, you might get into a little bit of a snag, but you'll, you'll get out of it, okay? Um, can it be, just watch out, is it possible that either the top or the bottom is just one? Like, because right now, this one here, what's left at the bottom here when you cancel out? Some students think it's zero. It's not. There's a one down here. Sorry for the interruption. Um, if, this is for grade nine students who are acting as student tour guides tomorrow and Friday. So they have brief meeting in the guidance office today at lunch. The grade nine students, students who are acting as tour guides. This includes the following students that need to see you at lunch. Um, those are the outliers. Okay. Uh, on page 11, I'm just going to ask you to do those two questions. That's it. If you if you can work through that and then just look at my key, I'm going to post it. Come up with your restrictions. Write out the bigger one and then cancel out and then see what you come up with. Okay. Uh, thank you, guys. We'll continue this tomorrow.